Glenn Pastor Bill Wiggs here from the Sunfield and Greenwood United Methodist Churches in Southern Illinois. And with me today again is my beautiful wife, Becky. At least the wife, Becky, is right. <laughs> oh, you're beautiful. All right, well, today we want to do another song. I just kind of feel like singing this week. So we're going to sing a, a great hymn, Blessed Be the Name. I really like this one. All praise to Him who reigns above in majesty supreme, who gave Himself for men to die, that He might man redeem. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name above all names shall stand, exalted more and more. At God the Father's own right hand, where angel hosts adore. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Redeemer, Savior, friend of man, once ruined by the fall. His love divides salvation's plan, and He has died for all. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. His name shall be the Counselor, the mighty Prince of Peace, of all earth's kingdom conqueror whose reign shall never cease. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. We're going to start with Isaiah 9, verse 6. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What a beautiful verse that is, talking about the Savior, Jesus, who was to be the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And this was a message that was given to Israel a long time before Jesus' coming. And, you know, names really do matter. Names yes. mean something. And, you know, when we named our children, we, we tried to think about what do the names mean. Sarah Elizabeth means? Sarah is princess, right. and Elizabeth is consecrated by God. So, we have a princess consecrated by God. And Joshua David means he who saves is Joshua. And do you remember what David means? I don't. Oh, no, we've lost it for a moment. But oh, think I about that for a minute. You I'm know, sorry, Joshua. this idea that he who saves. Joshua, it's the same name as Jesus. My name is Billy, really. Don't call me Billy, only my grandma. And Mrs. Suhaney got by with that. Mrs. Suhaney was one of my teachers. But uh, the name William, which is what my name comes from, means great protector. So I guess I'm not so great at it. I'm just a protector. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's kind of one of those funny things. So, you know, names do matter. And when we talk about Jesus, his name really does matter. And these are some of the characteristics of his name. You know, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. These are the things that our God is to us. But there's even another dimension to us, and it's found in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. 
I love that part where it says that he has received the name, the name that is above all other name. That's it's more excellent than even the angel's name. And it's this idea that he is Lord, he is King, he is Savior, and his name means something. You know, it really troubles me that in our world today, it is a normal part of our speech patterns. Not everybody's, not ours, but a normal part of the average person's speech pattern to use the name of the Lord in vain. That's the mm. third commandment, by the way. That's right. to, uh, you know, you're not supposed to use the name of the Lord in vain. Or like the old King James, thou shalt not. And a lot of people have forgotten, thou shalt not, and they use it all the time. It doesn't matter what it is, you know. I love this hamburger, and they got to use the Lord's name in that, too. You know, there's all kinds of this. But see, the name of the Lord truly does matter. Yes. And his name is above every other name. And your name matters, because he knows your name. Yes, he does. That's a powerful message, that he knows you personally. Mm -hmm. And that name is something that matters. We should protect our name. We should glorify God's name. Yes. And we should lift up our praises to him. Now, there's one more element here that I want to mention about names. And that's found in John 14. You want to read that one for us? John 14, verses 13 and 14. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Okay, so Jesus is talking here. He's talking about the importance of prayer. He's talking about lifting up things to God. And he says, if you ask it in my name, I will do it. We pray in Jesus' name because there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in his name because he has the name that is above every name. And when we ask things in Jesus' name, like I said a, a couple of days ago, it is under his authority that we are asking it. Not under our authority, but under his authority. That's why we pray in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because his authority to grant what it is we need. Now, this is not like a genie in the lamp kind of thing. You know, just because you use the name Jesus doesn't mean that things are going to happen all of a sudden great. You know, if you if you say in the name of Jesus I need it to rain, it might rain. Then again, it might not, because God doesn't want to give us what's not good for us at the time. If you are standing in ten foot of water already, basically, you don't want more rain. And if you can stand in ten foot of water, you're doing pretty good. You're one <laughs> tall person. But think about that. If the rain's already come down enough, it's over the top of your house, and you say, in the name of Jesus, we need more rain, doesn't mean God's going to give it to you. I sure no. hope he would not. No. And so it's not like it's a magic word. It's not like abracadabra or a la peanut butter sandwiches or something <laughs> like that. You know, this is about the name of Jesus. And when we take God's name seriously... We won't use it as a curse word. We won't use it as just an in place of something else to say. We won't use it just as an excited utterance. Instead, we will understand that his name is holy. In the Old Testament period, the people believed that everyone's name was sacred. It was a holy thing. And so when people named their children, they were considering the importance of that name. We also know that in the Bible, several times, God changed people's names. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about that. Whose old name did he, set, did he change? We know Abraham three. to Abraham. Right. Um, Jacob uh, was grabber. Did he grab yep. a heel? That's right. He became Israel. He became Israel, yeah. Sarah, Sarah. Sarai became Sarah, mm -hmm. right? What else? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. I am, and this one's, this one's important. This one's important because it's a New Testament one. From the one who was killing people to the one who became a great um, apostle. Yeah. Um, oh. Same name as a king. Saul yes, to... Yes, Saul to Paul. Saul to Paul. Yes. See? These See, are... even the pastor's wife gets stumped. Yeah. It's Things kind of... that I know, but it just doesn't pop right in there. That's so, right. You know, if you're in a Bible study or Sunday school class and Pastor Bill asks, now you should know this. Yeah. Even his wife blinks from time hey, to time. sometimes I lose it. Draws a blank. But that's the thing about it. Our names are sacred. 
we don't want people using our names in a bad way. Right. You know, when we were growing up, there were six kids in the house, and wow. our sister Dawn, and if she watches this, I'm sorry, Dawn, I'm telling a story on you. But uh, our, our, I have. Our sister Dawn would use the Lord's name in vain a lot, and uh, that really bugged Mom. She hated that. And so we got in the habit of any time she'd do that, we'd say, oh, my Dawn. And eventually she's like, stop doing that. Yeah, because God doesn't like it either. Mm -hmm. But when we pray, we must understand that the name of God is sacred. And it's in God's will that we pray in Jesus' name because it's by his authority that we pray. Your name is sacred to God. You are sacred to God. And our God is a holy God who has given us the name that is above every name to call out in our need, and that is the name of Jesus. He is our Savior. He is our friend, the friend of sinners, you know. He is the one who changes our lives today. He is our healing God. He is the one who brings peace. He is the one who counsels us when we are lost and not sure what to do. Our God is powerful, and His name is glorious. So, as you go through the rest of your week, a couple more days left, remember that you are sacred to God and your name is on his lips. And when you speak the name of Jesus, he will do what needs to be done. So honor God's name. Honor it. Use your name in a way that brings honor and glory to God by showing forth the joy of the Lord in you. And when you pray, Pray in Jesus' name, because I don't have any authority. You don't have any authority, except for that which comes from Jesus Christ. May his name be forever praised. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you that your name is above every name, that you have given us Jesus as our Savior, and because we have received him as our Savior, we come to you under his authority, the blood that he shed, the resurrection power. That's the authority that we come to you by. We come to you knowing, Lord, that you want only the best for us and that you know our names, that our names are on your lips. And Lord, we thank you for that. Lord, we want to glorify you this day. Help us to always glorify you. Help us to use your name to bring honor to you and not reproach. Help us, Lord, to always, always, always trust in you. And when we come to you in the name of Jesus, let us come in truth. Let us come with a sincere heart that brings honor and glory to you. Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, we ask for an end to this virus. Yes. We ask for your healing touch on those who are sick. We ask that you would be with those, God, who have turned away from you and call them back to yourselves. Be with all those who are dealing with pain, anxiety, trouble, depression, addiction. Lord, just lift them up right now in the name of Jesus and give them the strength that they need. Lord God, we trust you. And with all our hearts, we turn our whole lives over to you. For we pray it in Jesus' precious name and for his sake. Amen. 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 Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May you know that he's smiling upon you, and may he give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may you take joy in glorifying him today. Amen. You have a great rest of the day. God is faithful. Forever God is strong.